Welcome everybody to this part 6 of this Tony Hawk Beginner Skater Templar. Um, I think last time I went to basically all of vanilla the ultimate on it. Sharpshooter Purifier. But yeah, Sharpshooter has a pretty nice like blue stat as well right? that you can aim for. Like, you should be rather. Or like, it should be rather easy to get it, right? Seems good, seems good. It's not as good as, like, the Ganon or, like, a full legendary setup. But, like, for a blue one, it's very good. Hey, Jid one. Work one, work one. Oh, yeah, so we've done all the way to. Sorry, to the Comments Refuge, actually, right? And I said I should be looking into the dungeons and also, like, check out when the Vanquish set actually drops, right? So let's check out the Vanquish set first. Okay, so, like, GrimTools.com, right? Vanquisher. Vanquisher, there we go. There we go, that's what you're playing as a purifier. Oh yeah, these shoulders are pretty good as well. Oh wait, it's Pierce? Oh yeah, Shepard was Pierce actually, right? It's not elemental. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, that's basically like a budget Valdun, right? This is, this is kind of like a Valdun purifier, but easier to put together. I mean, armor is obviously going to be pretty low on the build like this, but other than that, it looks very solid, I was saying. Uh, how come you don't have a storm spread there? I think Storm Spread is pretty nice, but it also has like Pierce damage and like you convert the light into Pierce as well. That should be like almost as good as Chilling Rounds, probably even better, I don't know. Also like Vindictive to 11 is like what you want here as well, but I mean you still have like some points that you will gain from other sources, like from other quests, etc. Right? Okay, so the Vanquisher set piece is a 4 piece set, right? You have the helmet. The mantle, the armor, and the gem. Now the helmet drops from Port Valbury. The mantle drops from Ancient Grove. The chest from um, Steps of Torment, and the gem from Bastion of Chaos. Now, right? Um, what would I like to get like right now? Um, like, what would I like to get first? Which item? I would not like to get the helmet first, right? And maybe also not the amulet, because I have, like, Valiant set. But, like, shoulders and chest would be very nice. So chest was... Yeah, chest was, like, Steps of Torment anyway, right? We're gonna aim for this one first, for sure. Mantle is hard at the forest, though. Like, Ancient Grove is kind of hard. Um, I'll probably try to aim for... The helmet second then, because it does have like, like it drops in Port Valbury, and I think Port Valbury is gonna be like the second easiest dungeon for this character to run. Like Best of Chaos is probably gonna be harder because of Sharzul, the end boss being like highly fire resistant. You have a Valdun build as well. It has twice as much damage as Sharpshooter. Yeah. As I said, like, Sharpshooter is basically, like, budget Valdun, right? Vanquish chipset. <laughs> the Wang... Va Vanquisher? What? How do you say this even in Va Vanquisher? Vanquisher? Wank... Vanquish chipset? <laughs> well, yeah, welcome in. Also, Ground Zero. How are you, man? I'm looking forward to your stream tomorrow when you're gonna start playing the uh, Judgment build. But yeah. Okay, so what do we do? We do Steps of Torment, right? That's what we do. I haven't really found out, like, at which level these, like, drop, though. It's like, how do you know? I mean, it says map. Which means, like, it only spawns, like, uh... I mean, I mean, it just tells you, like, where it spawns, but, like, it doesn't tell you... ...whether or not that chest... Like, notable loot, okay, but, like... It doesn't say, like, the drop chance, it doesn't say... ...when it starts dropping, right? How do you know, like, when this starts dropping? Maybe it just always can drop here? 
as long as you're an automat. Doesn't matter on the... Like, doesn't matter which level you are. That would be very weird, though. <clears throat> and it can be 70 to 120, right? And it's like plus 6, meaning like 6 levels above yourself. Wait, 6 levels above myself would mean... Like, maybe it's the area needs to be, like, level 94, right? Which means I need to be at least level 88, then. Yeah, that sounds like it seems... ...true. Yeah, I'm gonna presume you need to be level 88 here. So we're gonna have to find something to do until later level 88, right? Which means I'm probably gonna run, like, through Act 5 first. Like, Act 5 is still, like, reasonably easy, compared to, like, Act 6 and 7. Uh, I mean, the first part of Act 7 is kind of easy as well, like, up to maybe, like, Oasis and Holding Chasm and, like, Vanguard for 3. It's kind of easy as well. Also, maybe, like, the first part of the Hidden Path as well is, like, not too hard either, right? Alright, let's run through the bog first then. So what we need here is well a Venom Guns Bail, a Leaf Maned Horn, a Agnum Bloom. You gotta kill Laria on the What is this? Why is it not being picked up? There we go. You gotta kill uh, not Laria actually, but Genaxia right on the way. And Genaxia's done. Genexus then is like over here, right? Oh wait, you were the same g Wait, are you... Oh yeah, I remember somebody called uh, Lu Juice in here, right? Oh, you're the same guy? You just name changed? I see, I see. Let's see how it is. You got five chest pieces from 186 Alchemist rounds, so it's like 5%. Oh, like 1 in 37. Wait, that's like not even 5%, right? That's like... That's like 2.8% or something, right? I'm gonna assume it's like around 3%, right? Probably. Also, this is an arcane, right? Oh, there we go. There was the projectile. Don't wanna get hit by arcanes. Oh, so he got healed, are you kidding me, dude? What is this? He got healed again? Wow. Okay. And we have a totem here as well, nice, nice. And you just divide 1 by 37 and then you have the percentage, right? But yeah, it should be around like 2.7-2.8% pro there. That seems correct. <clears throat> yeah. Meta doubling. I don't know about that.
Oh wait, I did find Agdenborg leather blueprint last time, right? So we got to like start making Agdenborg leathers. Also, where did I put my points now? I was putting the points here, right? But I'm not. I don't even know if that's like that good. Like the range, like the radius seems still kind of low. Like, I don't know. The name of the falling meteor skull. Um, wait, which one? This one, you mean? That's just a proc from my weapon. That's the. Rain of Fire proc from Cinder Scorn, the non mythical Cinder Scorn. I will probably lose that one later though, like, I'm not gonna use it for too much longer, I guess. I mean, it's like a level 50 weapon, right? So it's kinda starting to fall off. So I got the mythical Obsidian Plate Curious, right? I was using this, like, for a long time before, and I might go back to this again, right? I mean, this is basically the same as what I have, but better, right? Yeah, it's level 94 though, so... I'll have to wait a bit for that one. Yeah, I mean the flat fire is not like super good. Also, we got craftable yellow pants. That's actually very nice as well. Like, if you don't get like good pants, you can always start crafting those like yellow pants. And if they roll with like rare affixes, they're basically gonna be green pants, right? So, uh, if you don't have good pants, you can make your own pants, right? Uh, same thing for boots. If you get like stone plate greaves uh, blue front, if you don't get good boots, you can always make your own boots. And uh, also, I think there's one for. Uh, like rather two different blueprints for gloves as well, right? Like gloves, boots, and pants. If you don't get like good ones for end game, you can just craft your own. And if, like, if you have enough uh, iron boots as well as scrap, that is. Like until you get a good one, that might take a while. Like a good roll, right? Yeah, the glass are pretty good, right? I mean, I would like this one as a mythical as well, right? Mythical obsidian grass would be so good for the fizzers. I kind of want those even more badly than the uh, chest piece, actually. Yeah, around 30 crafts should be like giving you at least like one decent roll, right? Like a usable one, like a actual good usable one. So that doesn't sound like too bad. <clears throat> Alright, we also gotta find the undergrowth. We have checked spawn location number one and two. We didn't find it yet, so it has to be in spawn location number 3, which is uh, somewhere beyond the lag. I mean, it's on the west side here. But also, we're gonna still go inside the Tomb of Ugdal to get a free, like, when you go spirit, right? A free purple mount. We just kill this guy, we get a free purple mount.
Do you have rap arrow? Come on, come on. I'm gonna check out your boat here in a sec. Vengeful Wraith. I mean, you could do that. It's not like, I mean, I don't know. I'm kinda too lazy to craft. Let's go and uh, go to the traveling witches real quick. Rescue the witches. Then head over to Angden, I don't know, how's it called again? Undergrowth, 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 Undergrowth uh, spawn location number 3, which has to be over here, there it is. Uh, let's drop, drop a portal here, go to the next rift gate. Port back, and go inside the Undergrowth. And Oh wait, there's a elite here. Gotta go back and kill the elite, because this bloom elite can't spawn an Agden bloom, right? But I can't drop an Agden bloom. <clears throat> if you're lucky. Alright, let's check out your boat. Alright, let's move on here. We have a still warrior to kill. And blooms to farm. It's like a uh, acid dagger, right? or acid sword, rather. She doesn't even hit me, like, what the heck? What is she doing? Yo, Daddy Dragon, welcome on, good evening. Where do I want points and cold carver build, physique cunning or spirit? Probably mostly into physique. Probably like basically everything into physique. Maybe some points into spirit, like when your defensive ability is good, but um Corpus kinda squishy, so probably just all in physique actually. Do we want these? The living rings can be really good, like you should check these out. Like a fallen sky suffix, or like a frozen sky sharp suffix. That's a decent roll. We definitely want this chest piece, right? Like a pet belt. If you plan on playing a pet belt, um, make sure to keep the spell. Like it's really, really good. It's better than most legendaries, actually. Somebody with an open mind. All right. 
One shot from Gargoyle's Volcano while charging incoming. <laughs> yeah. Don't Bless charge into Gargoyle Volcanoes. Don't do that. Two point six K OADA on sort of set on the. I mean, yeah, why not? <laughs> Just get lucky and get full valiant set, right? Just don't charge. Just lose 100% of your DPS by not charging. Right. We need the uh, leaf main horn, right? Still missing that one. Ah, oh, but just go inside the rift gate, please. Okay. Yeah, Venice is like crazy good. It's literally the best like ring set you can have until end game. And even for like early end game, it's still like fine to use actually. No type of hesitation, you will be fine, right? They will be fine in the pot. What about these pounds? A lightning. Well, that's not fire, right? That's not fire damage. A lightning is not fire, confirmed. I need to leave main alpha horn still. Please give me a horn. There we go, perfect. <clears throat> Indeed, right? I don't know, man. Like, Barrow Home seen kind of like losers. Like, they can kill humans and eat humans, but they're like not strong enough to kill the humans. SMH my head, right? Maybe they eat humans because I think they are like tastier. I guess that's why. Oh, seal of the void. This would be so pog when they're like playing an attack speed based character, like range purifier for example, right? On the build I am playing right now. Uh, I don't even know which kind of seal I wanna use later on. Either resonance or might, I guess. Just be enemy with their home. I mean, they have like such good augments there. But yeah, if you're playing a lore playthrough and you're trying to be the good guy, then you should probably cut on now.
finally some catch on. Alright, this boss can be a little bit sketchy. He has these like lots of aether damage. As long as you like zoom properly, right? Don't get hit too much. Seems easy club. Imagine being a good guy in Grim Dawn, right? I mean, you might be like the bad guy in Act 7 as well, right? And you don't even have a choice there. Come see what's left of my wares. It's kind of debatable whether or not you're actually doing the, the right thing in Act 7 or not. Right. Uh, we don't need any of this, right? We decided not to wear the pants either. Wait, did I not clear the mine? I, I was in the mine, right? Like, I literally was in the mine. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, sometimes the quest is bugging out. I am so pleased wow. that we can come. I am so. Yeah, okay. Seems like we're not gonna continue on with the quest here now. Must have missed quest mobs. I certainly have killed at least one of them, and I'm at zero out of six. Like, that's just impossible. That's literally impossible. The altar of Rick. Now that you have ever since the yet yeah, deep beneath good, you will I'm just gonna reset the game and then Karate, do them again probably. Not far. Yo gamer bot, welcome on, welcome on. Kinda still running the game, is Crucible any good way to get gear for late game? It's main game the best, I mean, it depends like... How high level you are, it depends like how strong a character is, it depends like which kind of... Crucible waves or which kind of like Shadow Realm shard your character is able to do. Um, if you're able to do like the hardest stuff in Crucible and Shadow Realm, then yes, those are better than the main campaign. If you're not able to do that, then like sticking to main campaign, farming like dungeons and totems in main campaign is probably more efficient. And it's like not 150 to 170 like easiest difficulty, it's 150 to 170 on gladiator difficulty. Right? If you're able to do that, then yeah, Crucible is like probably the best way to do it able to do like Shadow Realm 65 and higher on Elite or Shadow Realm 50 and higher on Ultimate then yes those are also better than main campaign farming but if you're not able to do either or then the best thing is probably to just um, stick to main campaign and do like dungeons and totems on Ultimate of course <clears throat> Yeah, welcome. Have you go every Well met. Also Sci Hunter. 94, welcome. Thanks for the photo. Tainted Ruby of Gardal. 
Mythical. I mean, less cooldown to Judgment and like plus three Heart of Wrath. Certainly pretty good, actually. Hmm. <clears throat> Too bad I'm not an Inquisitor, right? Then it would have been like even better. Like, this is so good for like Aura Paladins, right? But, like the GG emulate for like Aura Paladins, actually. Uh, I might still use it once I like get rid of my. Nah, just kidding. I mean, I'm gonna use Valiant Set probably all the way until I get Vanquisher Set, right? Like Vanquisher Set is uh, using a gem as well, like an amulet. So I need to use the amulet slot for that instead, right? Let's do the mine real quick again. I don't know, I think the quest box just didn't spawn the first time, like, there's no way I had, like, 0 out of 6 killed, right? I've had this happen to me a couple of times already. It's not like the first time this happened ever. At least like five to six times already. But like sometimes you wanna do the mine like in advance and it doesn't quite work. Oh well, not a big deal. Uh, since we're here, might as well just run the boss again, right? Hope for some good drops for the proper boss here. Why not? Do I have any ideas for the next spell to play? I think I wanna do a spellbinder as the next plus I found build. Because like people usually talk about Death Knight being like the good uh like um class to play for for Creek set or Battle Mage, but like nobody talks about spellbinder, right? Even though Spellbinder is like one of the best classes in the game. Uh, that said, I might not just do like another SSF like instantly. Maybe like wait until the next patch or something and do like some other builds until then. I have like a couple of endgame builds to to do as well. Like I did, wanted to make like a mortar trap build, right? I need to figure out what to do with my infiltrator. I need to figure out what to do with my dervish that I have at like lying around at level 94, right? Yeah, right on the local one. I spoke of seasons for the next... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's also probably what we're gonna do, like, next couple of uh, weeks, days. Um, like, Mike Fick has a season planned for Grim Dawn. 
and I will probably participate in that. Ah, it's just for fun, obviously, but it's basically like, uh... Yeah, it's a couple of rules, and then you, like, sign up, and then you get, like, a template character. Or, like, rather, no, you don't get, like, a template character, but you get, like, a template stash. You basically start out the season um, with, like, a shared stash that you get as a file from him. Other than that, it's basically, like, a fresh start, right? And um, that template... Like, that shared stash might, for example, uh, contain, I don't know, maybe like 10 XP potions, some merits, some mandates, just to, like speed up the leveling process for the very first character a bit. And uh, maybe even Loker set, I don't know. I don't know, he's gonna plan it. Um, and then you get like points based on like the content that you clear, and you have like, I don't know, maybe like a month time for that. So, like. You sign up, then you have like a month of time to yet? to do like uh, the dungeons ultimate, um, super bosses and ultimate, right? Uh, secret bosses and ultimate, and you get like bonus points for uh, like depending on which coin that you get. I mean, you you do, right? Mike, fuck planning things, Pepe Love. <laughs> he's not as Pepe as you might think. Like on stream, he's a. Uh, He's a big Pepe, Pepe guy, but like off stream, he's not a Pepe guy at all. And I mean, his YouTube is not Pepe guy either. Like, his YouTube is pretty fire pad, right? Pretty smart, actually. Alright, let's do this Ravager quest as well. Hardcore slash softcore. I think he plans it to be softcore and like you get penalty for like dying. So, like. Uh, soft hardcore, basically, that's what he calls it. But I, I mean, if you if you run it in hardcore, I guess you can still like participate when you're playing hardcore. I would say, like you're just shooting yourself in your own knee, right? So if I'm gonna play it, I will probably just play by his rules, but like play hardcore instead of softcore, just to make it like harder for myself, just so that I lose. And yeah, you can do multiple characters, obviously. I mean, the only thing that you're slowing down is yourself, right? Oh yeah, we found the uh, when you go here, which means there's not gonna be another one here, because that's like the same when you go with like two different spawn locations. And I, am I gonna kill Ravager on this character? Maybe, maybe on Elite. Like, you got the same helmet on Elite, right? But he's a little bit easier on Elite. So. Uh, I think I'm gonna push this character a little bit further than like the purifier. And I think if you play it right, like at least on soft core, you can definitely like kill all the Celestas with this guy. You just like skate around uh, properly, right? But yeah, I mean, I don't know yet. Maybe I uh, can't do it on this patch because uh, Mike Fix season is gonna start soon, and then I will probably play that instead of this character, and then play this character later. Though, like, you can always go back to this character. Like, this is basically it's like this character has its own account, so um, like his own folder, which is basically like an account. I can always like switch between this character and like my other characters, so like my seasonal, my big season characters, right? Yeah, it's not gonna be a quick Ravager kill. I would, I would, I was uh, expecting like 20 to 30 minutes as well on a build like this. Especially like when you don't have like GG gear yet. That's uh, probably gonna be like. Yeah, 20 to 30 minutes, rather. What I think about Mythical Ravager's Bind Weapon to fit for Blood Knights, huh? Works fine. Yeah, I generally like uh, Blood Knight more with a two-hander, obviously. But it's certainly fine for Blood Knight set, yeah, why not? Arcane, okay, oh god. Oh, there it is. Protect on out. Yeah, 
I mean, I would say it's like an amazing weapon. At least I don't think so. But then again, I've never played it because it didn't like look super amazing to me. But for Blood Knight, it should be fine. Yeah, like it, it does fit Blood Knight for sure. And Blood Knight is a good set, so I can see a build using that and Blood Knight being decent, at least decent. Mike Fick League presented to you by Gamer's Towel. <laughs> Uh, oh wow. Alright, we found when you go number three. Just chilling over there, right? Just there on the map. Ah, uh, we gotta kill the. Oh no, that's not the Blood Singer. There's a Blood Singer. We gotta kill the Bloodsingers because Bloodsingers can heal. Yeah, like he just killed, uh, I mean, healed this guy up to full, right? Uh, that's pretty yikes. I mean, this when you go can basically spawn like here, next to this uh, house, right? Like over here, next to that house, and like here as well, somewhere. A couple of uh, spawn locations as well. Shouldn't be like that hard to find there. Are pet builds any good? Yes, they are. Um, I just don't like them that much because pets are not that interactive, I would say. At least not for me. I'll give you, a good price on you just have to like scale your own resistances as well as the pet's resistances. Like, it can be quite a challenge when it comes to gearing. I think like theory crafting a uh, pet build and like gearing a pet build is on average probably harder than a non-pet build. But once you figure that out, like once you figure out the gear, um, pet builds can be like very strong, very very strong. And also kind of beginner friendly because like you, you just need to like run around in circles and like let the pets kill everything. All of it. <laughs> Lord Jenner. All right, which Ravager do we summon here? Even I don't even know. It is Ravager. I do not. I mean, the best Ravager, on average, to kill is Ravager of Flesh, right? Like, I mean, there are like three different Ravagers, and depending on which of the three guys you sacrifice here, you will get a different Ravager, which has like different. Like slightly different damage types and abilities, and also will drop a different helmet once you kill him. He is brash and prone to uh, Tubald will spawn the Ravager of Flesh. Um, Evelyn will spawn the Ravager of um, Souls, I believe, and oh, no, Jordith rather. <laughs> they have the same name, the same uh, surname. Uh, Jordith is the Ravager of uh, Souls, I believe, and Orin is Ravager of Minds, right? And this guy's Ravager of Flesh. And the helmet, is, the helmet, or like the headpiece of the Skyrot, um, has like percent health and vitality resistance. Um, I think of mines is crit, no, uh, like, like I, I, I don't know, like one of them is like chaos rust and last steel, and the other one is like aether rust and crit damage. I think I don't quite remember which one is which then. But I mean, yeah, you can like check them out on Grim Tools, right? But yeah, obviously we're not gonna do that yet because like Ravager is a super boss and is like basically like the third strongest boss in the entire game. I would say so. We're just like at one shot of this guy right now. So we're not gonna do it. <laughs> no balls. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're showing an Ocker test. Are there any better combinations for pets? Uh, not really. I mean, the Necromancer combinations are also pretty good. They're like as good, I would say, not better. Like Shaman, basically you pick Shaman, Necromancer, and Octodus, like two out of the three. And however you combine them, you're always gonna have, a, gonna have like a very good pet build. Like all three are like top tier. I would say early on the Necromancer is a little bit stronger though because Necromancer does have the skeletons that like early on at least skeletons like rock. They do fall off like very hard though. 
and it's very hard to like make them work in the end game unless you have like very specific items and even then they will still perform worse than the other paths against like very hard end game Alright, the rig sect legards. Not the worst role, like incan I mean Shrewd is like percent cunning, that's pretty bad. But incantations is like uh decent actually. That's not too bad. Let's move on to uh, the second part. And yeah, like the prefix is very bad. Goal set for pet necro is one of the strongest pet builds, yeah. That's true. That one doesn't use skeletons though, it uses um, the stinky potato guy, right? What's it called again? Blind Fiend, right? Like, Blind Fiend is a very, very good pet. Like, in all stages of the game, basically. It's a little bit slower, like, has a little bit less DPS early on than, like, skeletons, but at least he doesn't die, right? It's later on. Pudge. <laughs> He's basically Pudge, yeah. Poison Pudge. He had one with Blood Fiend and Skeletons, a gold set? Really? Does Skeletons like actually do something though, or did they just die? Yo, GG, welcome on, welcome on. Solar Alt Pants, he's bad man. He is bad man. Oh well. We got Enchanted Earth, which is like another endgame component, kinda. It's not like super good, but you can use it in some specific circumstances. Alright. It's very situational though, like very situational actually. I think I'm just gonna run SLT now. Like, I'm level 88 anyway, right? And I'm here, like, next to the subformer because of the second uh, part of the hidden path. So, might as well just run SLT now. Might as well run the dungeon. What will this spell develop into? It's basically gonna stay the same forever. Just gonna be stronger and stronger. Time to get frozen, die to Alchemos. Uh, yep. What's my freezer us? 80%? Never mind. I'm not gonna get frozen and uh, die to him, right? But yeah, if you don't have 80% freezer us. Um, you might want to grab a Hall Frost Ointment before you go down here and we'll use that to kill the final boss of this dungeon. You don't need energy sustain if you if you have energy leech though, right? And who needs freeze rest? Like just use all all frost ointment, man. Also, ascension does give you freeze rest, right? Like as long as ascension is up at least. 
I have a couple of characters with like super low freezers. And I just use a Horfless Anton on them whenever I need it. That'll be fine. You get frozen twice just running around the neck too. <laughs> I mean, don't get hit by that trash, right? <laughs> Can Ascension have 100% uptime? Um, yes, with the specific, uh, with specific items, yes. Or like close to 100% I think, and then you can like use, um, and you can also always like use what's it called, uh, time dilation to have like basically 100% uptime as well. That kind of works as well for some builds. I'm actually not sure anymore, like um, you definitely used to be able to have 100% uptime on Ascension, but they nerfed that I think. Maybe it's like 90% uptime now or something, with the exact, like, correct items. So there's like a small window where you look, would have to like disengage maybe a little bit or something. I don't know. Hell no. Hell no shotgun. Did I get it? Oh yeah, also maybe we're getting a uh, good like offhand here, right, again. We gotta kill the scar for his offhand anyway. I mean, I have a sandstorm prefix right now, though. That's like very hard to beat, actually. Thank you now. Yeah, of course we got the the wrong one again, but <laughs> I mean, it had like bad rolls otherwise, so it doesn't really matter too much. Okay, let's actually open this up. I've never been here in the sky tree yet, right? And like if you're a new player, maybe like going here the first time on ultimate is maybe not the best idea. Like, maybe you should check this out on elite or normal earlier. Before going your ultimate. Oh man, if you're playing softcore though, just join me right now in ultimate. Zarthalolan. Maybe emptying my bags is a good idea. Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> That's probably a good idea as well, yeah. Like going back to shop before you enter the dungeon. Don't do it like once you've opened the door though, like if you go back and sell while the door's open, the door is probably gonna close before you make it back and then um, like you, you will cry because you just wasted like skeleton key for nothing. That's smart. And you have to reset the game because you can't enter anymore. Maybe just like don't pick up greens here. Like this. That's locked. At least not the trash queens. I'm gonna lose some iron belts doing this, but yeah, my inventory is pretty full. Hara's ward. Wait, that's like a Kelly's Tempest item as well. No, never mind. The ward is actually only for Phantasma Blaze and Sun Jacks. Plus one night blade, plus one demo, cold tears. I mean, yeah, no, we're not playing that. We are not playing that anyway. <clears throat> oh, that's retaliation shoulders. You wanna play Acid Retaliation, you wanna play um, the Off the Three set, right? Shoulder Guard of Three and the others. Also here, um, you do get another of those like totally normal shields. You get the level 94 version here in Ultimate, level 75 in Elite and level 51 in Normal. This is the totally no normal buckler giving you, well, bleeding stuff plus one Oathkeeper. I like playing a bleeding... Or like physical characters, not 
too bad, right? Especially when you're like playing an Archon, I guess. Like a bleeding Archon, maybe. I guess that can work. We've maxed out Heart of Wrath, actually. Uh, maybe I just max out Vigor now, right? I mean, Haven, rather. Uh, sure, why not? Get some more health. As a retailer, such a bait. Don't fall for it. Yeah, I mean, the best one is still to like use acid retaliation and then convert it to physical instead, right? It's probably better. But acid isn't like that bad. I don't know, I think it's fine. It's just a little bit worse than physical. I mean, I played one as well, like Grasping Wines, Acid Retaliation, Archon Hut. Which is, yeah, it's not as good as Physica, I guess, but it's still fun. Alright, Igor has two monster frequents. He's gonna drop one of them usually. This one is for Drain Essence and Chromatic Burst. I mean, um, yeah. Nothing good for this world at least. Yo, Fear Tigger, welcome, welcome. Good evening. How are you? How good is Dark One Conjurer versus Crate? Uh, it's not the best against Crate, but I think it's doable. Certainly doable. But I wouldn't say it's like super good against Krait. No. It's better against like Ravager and Karagadra than against Krait for sure. Steps of Torment has like another secret spot over here, right? And we're gonna have to go here again later. But we're gonna go here now first as well, once for the one shot chest here. Like one shot uh, hidden spoils chest. Which is not really that worth it, but oh well. Oh well. At least you know this uh, area exists now. Alright, Alchemist, if you don't have 80% Freezer Dress, right, this is where you use your Hawfrost Ointment. What the heck, how did I... <laughs> how did I go to the chest room like that? Hello, game? Game, please? Just take the loot and leave. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Wait, why does it not show this one? Oh, because it's when it melee, right? 
Uh, so. Why do I have a yellow in here? What the heck? Okay, Vanquisher set piece, please. Uh, nope. So, yeah, Vanquisher piece can drop from this middle chest here. But apparently, it's like a one in like 30 to 40 runs or something. I don't quite exactly know, but it's not like the best drop rate. So, we're gonna run this place a lot. A lot, a lot. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Jinx, welcome on. Hello, working new character. I see on the forum. I've run into two troubles with it and I'm looking for some help. Yeah, ask away. Ask away. With whatever questions you have regarding your build. I don't need any of these, right? Did I sell the Dreek sect as well? Maybe I shouldn't sell those, right? Those are pretty good. See you around. Come see what's left. Get Vanquisher in the first be Bastion of Chaos run ever. Holy moly, dude. That's some... Um, that's a proper luck right there. Alright, uh, let's put... Wait, what about these? Mythical Worm Scale Foot Guards, right? They're pretty good. Um, elemental, Stone, Petrify, Wood Lose, Physrus, and Aetheris, right? What's my Aetheris? Hmm... Honestly, Elite Legion Greaves are so good, right? It's crazy. Like, this is only like 100 armor less than this. They're so good. What the heck? We also got Golemborn. Mythical Golemborn. Pierce and Poison. Wait, that's like literally... I uh, know, I would need like more Poison than Pierce, right? 44 Pierce. I don't need 44 Pierce. I have Pierce Poison in all my gear right now, right? Twenty-six Aether. Uh, so I would need like three. And at least two augments, right? So twenty-four poison. So I lose like nine poison. But yeah, the armor is so good, right? The armor would be so good. These are kind of squish. They have like pork slenders. I might have to like go back well to mm, the other devotion if I use Golden Bone, right? I have to like go back to Scarab if I use Golden Bone Protein. Cyber Psych, welcome on, thanks for the follow. Welcome, welcome on. I went back home and it said I was doing over 1300 damage. Now when I'm playing, it says I'm back to 123. Uh, I mean, you mean the DPS counter here? I mean, don't trust us. Like, don't trust us ever. Like, this is only gonna take into account whatever you put to your, like, left or right mouse button, right? If you have moved to here, like, I'm literally doing zero damage right now. Which obviously is not true, because, like, I'm still using these abilities. Like, if I only trust my DPS number here, I would be doing zero damage. Like, don't trust this. Like, this number is very misleading. It only takes into account whatever your, like, main damage, I mean, whatever skill you put into your, either your left or right mouse button, right? If I have virus mod here, if I have, like, judgment here, then would show the judgment DPS and not the virus my DPS. Like this doesn't like take into account all of your damage. It's only one ability. And that one ability is as it says here, average damage per second for your left mouse button and right mouse button ability, right? Like it says judgment 4757, virus might 9786, right? And it only shows the one that you have on your left mouse button. Unless you have moved to on your left mouse button. Then it only shows the right mouse button, right? Um, 
Also, for example, for Virus Might, in my case, it does not actually calculate all the damage from the Fire Trail, which is like 99% of my damage. It would only take into account the damage of my actual, like, first hit, right? The first hit that I'm doing when I charge in. That's the only thing that gets, like, shown here in the DPS counter. Everything else is not shown here. So, yeah, don't trust this. Unless you're playing, like, a default attack build. And you have your default attack on your like, left mouse button. That's like the only time when it's kind of like okay to use it. So yeah, uh, maybe just have like switch around your like left or right mouse button since the last time you played. Does it count weapon pool scores though? No, it doesn't either. Yeah, even for like default attack um, builds it can be a little bit misleading, yeah. Because it doesn't take into account weapon pool skills. So yeah, TLDR it's very unreliable. I want to use these. I have to like put all the stuff that I might want to use into like the last stash tab here. Otherwise, I'm gonna forget about things. Just like this one, right? Like maybe, maybe if I like break the Valiant set. If I find like crazy good rings or something. Okay, what do we do? Uh, let's continue on with the hidden path for now, right? And then just reset and like run SLT over and 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 over, right? I guess. Wind Devil is main damage. Like you have Wind Devil on your left or right mouse button. Um, yeah, then it's put like... I don't know, does it even show that? It might like show zero for Wind Devil or like... Basically nothing for the window or not. But yeah, like it, it depends. Like, do you have Wind Devil on your mouse buttons, or do you have Wind Devil like over here on other buttons? If, if you have it over here, then it doesn't show Wind Devil anyway. And like, because Wind Devil is a pet. Like basically a player scale pet, right? Kind of. Um, it might not show anywhere. I mean, the stat screen, like all of these stats make perfect sense, in my opinion. Actually, all of them make sense. It's just that, like, the DPS one is very, very misleading and doesn't take into account most things. So this one was like very uh, misleading. All others are perfectly fine though. But yeah, it can be very just misleading because like it shows you like minus or plus damage per second if equipped, right? On these weapons, for example. Um, but in reality, they might be actually like a lot better or like a lot worse, and it doesn't quite reflect that, right? Window on red button. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I think also for Wind Devil, like, it does it um, take into account damage from, like, Maelstrom, for example? I think Maelstrom is, like, a separate entity from Wind Devil, like, procs off Wind Devil. So because of that, um, it doesn't show the damage of Wind, I mean, of Maelstrom. Even though Maelstrom is, like, a lot of damage, it probably just doesn't show that. Alright, do we do uh, Mouth Queen as well? It's separate, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, wind, I mean, if you're playing Wind Devil, like a Wind Devil build, and you have nodes into Maelstrom, which is like a very good ability, then those nodes will not be um, taken into account for the actual like, DPS calculation. Oh, 
Oh shit. Oh my god, come here, what are you doing? What? How did it go up again? Oh my god, what? Shit, dude, no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh well. <laughs> the pega clap. The pega clap. <laughs> oh well, dude. How many hours lost? I don't know, man. I don't even know, man. I didn't expect it to come up that fast again, like after the first notification, right? Like, it's it doesn't come up that quickly again, right? And then the second time, it like came up way quicker, dude. What the heck? Oh well. We got our fair share of how to die to Mad Queen, right? Malagant, Mike Vick, now me as well. <laughs> there you go. Passive cluster, yeah. I was spamming mirror, but like too late. Oh fuck, dude! Another one bites the dust. Yeah, that's why you don't do Mad Queen. <laughs> At least not like that. Just use the cluster, man. Yeah. Okay, what do we even do now, chat? What do I do today? What do I do? Do the spare binder now. Cry in fetal position. What about Rodney Mullen? What the fuck is Rodney Mullen? Oh my god, dude. How do you die like that? How do you die like that on an Arcanist, man? Fuck me, man. Oh, that was also a skater. <laughs> the fuck is that Reaper? Do <laughs> uh, this. There's no climb time for a cluster. I mean, I should have seen her aura, right? Like, why did I not see the aura? Also, what is this doing? Hello? Somebody explain what is this is doing? <laughs> Can you stop? There we go. Like she was, yeah, it was already up now, right? And dead, yeah. I mean, obviously, when you like do that, when she has her aura up, then you just die. But I didn't see the, like, I didn't expect the aura to come up that soon again. Like, that's so weird. I should have. Man. I mean, it's act like, usually it's easy, right? Like, whenever she screams, check if she does her aura or not. I didn't check properly because I thought, like, my latest notification was, like, not that long ago, and she's not gonna be able, like, to reapply her aura again. Yeah. Cluster up, mirror up. Not like this. What's the aura? I mean, she screams all the time. I mean... Yeah... But also, she only activates the aura when she screams. Like, not every time she screams does she activate the aura, but whenever she screams... I mean, whenever she activates the aura, she's also gonna scream. So, technically, you have to, like, 
check her for aura whenever she screams, right? <laughs> I love the way I'm saving clusters, yeah man. What if I retaliate to her retaliation? Uh, you can't retaliate from her spikes actually, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> 